Well, congratulations. You are officially a statistician. Now, you might not feel like it, but we have completed Chapter 1, and we have covered everything that you would need to know to be a good statistician. So, in other words, all we're doing in this lesson is we're going to be looking at some data and using everything we've talked about so far in this chapter, all the terms we've been using, like um, interquartile range, median, mode, um, all of those. We're going to be looking at histograms, box plots, um, standard deviations. We're going to be looking at a lot of data, and we're going to be using that data to compare and contrast some information. So now this is going to be slightly different than maybe what you're used to with traditional uh, math assignments. There's going to be a lot more writing involved. And the key here is you want to make sure, like it says here in this paragraph, you want to make sure that you write with clear and descriptive um, sentences to describe the data. So let's look at some other things that I'll be looking at to make sure that you know what you need to include with, with some of your descriptions. Now one of the first things to recognize is what I have highlighted there in the next paragraph is that anytime you write your written descriptions you should compare three things. You can, should compare the shapes of the data, the centers, and the spread of the data. So the, the shapes we would get that from the histograms. That's going to give us the best idea to be able to describe the distribution of the data dealing with their shape. Then we would look at the centers. We want to make sure we include that. That's the measure of centers, remember, would be looking at the median, at the, the mean and the median. And the spread of data, there's a number of ways you could look at that by looking at the standard deviation. We've looked at the range. You could even look at the box plots and deal with the spread of data there. And the description should include vocabulary and any of the statistical measures that we've been talking so far in this chapter. And your description should also be clear enough so that if someone's reading your description, they should not have to see the graphs. Okay, so that's important to recognize that your description should be clear enough where they should not have to see the graphs. Now, here are some things to be able to help you figure out what kind, you know, how to get started and what kind of things to include. So these are just some suggestions to help you out. So one thing you might consider is you might want to notice how many times larger one number is than another. You might want to figure out and note where the greatest relative differences are. So where are the biggest differences as you look at the data? Now it's easy to look at the five number summary and, and, and compare individual numbers from that five number summary. But I would want to encourage you to look at the box plus, box plots and examine where the different quartile is in one distribution might compare to the quartile in another distribution. And you'll look at what I mean by that in a minute. If there's a possibility of having any outliers, you want to discuss the outliers if that's necessary. And like I mentioned earlier, histograms are going to give a better picture of the shape of the overall distribution. Well, let's look at this data and let's see what kind of uh, descriptions we can make. Now, we here we have uh, two histograms. We have what's called a um, summary table. That's this blue table here would be called a summary table. And lastly, we have the box plots. Now, we're going to make some descriptions uh, or some comparisons based on these three items. So now let's start with the histograms. So again, the histograms are going to give us an idea of what the shape looks like. So here's one statement you could say. You could say the distribution of heights for the NBA is all centered around 78 to 80 inches. So we see that right in here. It's all centered around uh, that bin of data. Where for the NFL, you can see that the distribution of heights for the NFL is centered around this 74 to 76 range. You could also make the statement to say that the NFL, the distribution of data there, is more symmetric than the data in the NBA. So there's some basic ways that we could describe a histogram or to compare these histograms. Let's, next, let's look at the box plots. Now there's a lot of things that we could get here. Now you could compare individual values and compare this uh, Q2 value with this Q2 value, uh, our median, you can compare those. But I would encourage you to be to look a little bit deeper. Because remember with our box plots, we have these whiskers that stick out away from the boxes. Each of those whiskers represent 25% of our data. This would represent the lower 25%. This over here would represent the upper 25%. Remember the box represents the middle 50% of our data. And then inside that box, we have two smaller boxes. The first box represents 
the lower half of that 25 or the lower half of that 50 percent and this would be the upper half of that 50 percent of that data so what are some comparisons we could make with those two box plots well one thing you could say is about 25 percent of NBA players their heights are taller than any of the NFL players so the 25 the upper 25 percent um, of the NBA player heights are taller than any of the NFL players you could even say that the um, lower 25% of the NBA players' heights are the same as 75% of the NFL players' heights, the lower 75% of the NFL players' heights. You could say that the middle 50% of the NBA players is about the same as the upper 25% of the NFL players' heights. So you can see that there's a lot of ways we can, we can compare percentages by looking at the box plots. Let's look at the summary table. Now here's something you might notice. You might notice that just looking at the NBA players, their mean and median are very close to each other. Same thing with the NFL. They're exactly the same between the mean and the median. Well, what does that tell you? That tells you that either the mean or the median would be a good measure of center for both the NBA and for the NFL. You could also notice that there's about a one inch difference for the that the NFL players versus the NBA players. The NBA, their standard deviation is about one inch more than the NFL players, meaning that their data is actually more spread out than the NFL players. You could look at the inter, the same thing with the interquartile range. What that means is that the middle 50% of their data is more spread out than the middle 50% of the data for the NFL players. So those are just some ways that we could compare data. And what I've done is if you want to write that out or copy down what I just said, I have that summarized here. So in red, that's all of the compare that's just some of the comparisons you could make by looking at the histograms. What's in purple is looking at the box plots. And what's in green here looks at the summary table. So if you want to pause the video so you can uh, write that some of that down. But notice how descriptive my um, Comparisons are, that's what I'm looking for. So you want to make sure that when you're doing your assignment, because this pretty much ends the, the lesson here. We're not going to do that activity. The activity is something that we did in class or that we will do in class. Uh, but when you're doing your assignment, I encourage you to make your own comparisons, write them down when you're doing that, when you're asked to do so for some of those problems. But then make sure that you check your answers on Moodle and don't be content with your original, pro with your original answers. See what you could do better to make a more descriptive and more clear descriptions so you can perfect that because it is a skill that you're not going to be good at the first time around. It's something that's a learned skill. You have to practice it. So make sure that you do try to make those better as you go through the assignment. So that is where we're going to conclude this video. So that concludes this first chapter. So congratulations. We have completed our first chapter in FST. Uh, hopefully so far it's been a good experience and Hopefully you will do well on this first test. So with that, good luck.